Hello, my name is James Schumberg. I'm here today to talk to you about variable frequency drives, their application, and their maintenance. I wrote this seminar based on my 30 plus years of experience designing, applying, and troubleshooting in the field various AC drive systems using variable frequency drive technology. In addition to focusing on the technology issues of variable frequency drives, we're going to also discuss correct motor selection. The motor is the most critical element in every AC drive application. The motor is the torque producing element. The purpose of the motor is to convert electrical power into mechanical power and to move the mechanical load at a desired speed. Keep in mind the AC drive itself does not produce any torque not one ounce, and system torque is limited by the ability of the motor to produce that torque. The motor is the most critical element in every AC drive application. Let's suppose that your motor is outputting maximum torque. Let's suppose also that your machine now requires more torque in order to move the mechanical load. Perhaps your owner has decided to add load to the machine, perhaps we want to move a material that's heavier in viscosity, or uh, perhaps we want to add additional load to a conveyor. How can you adjust your AC drive to obtain a further increase in motor torque? Well, if your motor is already outputting maximum torque, you cannot adjust the drive to obtain more torque. Once the motor is maxed out, there is nothing you can do with the drive to obtain more torque. We'll talk about why in just a little bit. To diagnose a drive problem that's related to an incorrect motor or a misapplied motor, one has to understand how the motor produces torque in order to recognize that it is a misapplied motor. So let's take a look at some induction motor construction and let's take a look at just exactly how induction motors produce torque and what limiting factors may be built into the motor that prevent the motor from producing the required torque. And we'll also take a look at what makes a motor unsuitable for use with a variable frequency drive. All motors have a maximum torque output capability. It's a physical property of the motor. The amount of torque that a motor may produce is limited by the physical characteristics of that motor. Not all motors are created equal. In other words, one manufacturer's 10 horsepower motor will be capable of producing more torque than another manufacturer's 10 horsepower motor. NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, is a consortium of electrical manufacturers that have joined together to write a set of standards so that one manufacturer's product is interchangeable with another, a common set of standards. Many motors used in industry are designed, manufactured, and tested per these minimum standards that are laid out by NEMA. Again, these are minimum standards. NEMA specifies as minimum performance standards for motors built per NEMA specifications. High quality motors will exceed NEMA minimum standards, some motors more so than others. Can you identify the maximum motor performance capability by reading the motor nameplate or by looking at the motor? The answer is no. The motor nameplate specifies the minimum performance capability of the motor, not the maximum. NEMA specifies the minimum performance capability. Some motors may produce well more than the minimum. Some motors may just barely be capable of producing the, the minimum. Other than running the motor and testing it under a mechanical load, you cannot determine a motor's maximum torque capability. Like I said, you have to run the motor and test it under load to determine its maximum torque capability. The torque producing capability of a motor is tested every time a machine is operated. 
The motor is the most critical element in every AC drive application. An underperforming motor cannot be corrected with drive adjustment or programming. All things that are moved with electric motors are moved by magnets and magnetic fields within the motor. Most magnetic fields in motor are produced by electromagnets. The strength of any electromagnet is limited by the type and amount of magnetic material around which the electrical coil is wound. Let's talk a little bit about the electromagnets that are inside the motor. Like water and like electricity, a magnetic field will take the path of least resistance. Some materials are better conductors of magnetic fields than others. We call these materials magnetic materials. Iron and steel are examples of good magnetic conductors. Air, wood, plastic, glass, aluminum, brass, copper. These are examples of materials that do not conduct magnetic fields. Magnetic materials can be used to capture, concentrate, and conduct magnetic fields. The magnetic field that surrounds a magnet is said to exist in lines of magnetic flux. All magnetic materials have a limit as to how much magnetic flux they can conduct or they can absorb. Just like a sponge that is full of water and cannot absorb any more water, magnetic materials can be filled as well. The point at which a magnetic material becomes filled with flux is called magnetic saturation. On the left, we show a picture of what a magnetic field may look like that's created by a coil of wire with an electrical current passing through the coil of wire. The magnetic field would have something about the shape of a donut, and here we're looking at the cross section of that donut, or the inner tube out of a car. Directly through the center of the coil, the two fields cancel each other out, and it appears to be a tiny hole directly through the center of the coil. On the right, we see how some magnetic material, in this case we show an iron bolt or steel bolt, placed inside the coil, will absorb the magnetic field and concentrate it. Strengthen that area of magnetism, if you will. The bolt itself will become magnetized, and the uh, amount of magnetism, the strength of the magnetic field, will depend upon that bolt's capability to absorb the magnetic field. A larger bolt could absorb a larger field and would become stronger than a smaller bolt. The strength of an electromagnet is sometimes called the magnemotive force, or MMF for short. The unit of measure for MMF is the ampere turn. Ampere turns can be calculated by multiplying the amps of electrical current flowing through a coil times the number of wraps, or what is called turns of wire, comprising the coil. In other words, MMF equals A times T. A is the number of amps flowing through the coil. T is the number of turns of wire that create the coil or that comprise the coil. So you can see by this formula, if the amps go up, the MMF increases, and that is the strength of the electromagnet. The electromagnets in a motor, just like any other electromagnet, consist of turns of wire wrapped around a magnetic material. In the case of a motor, it's usually some type of magnetic steel or steel designed specifically to conduct a magnetic field. This brings us to the end of part one, choosing the correct motor. Parts two, three, and four are also on YouTube, or you may see the complete free video by going to www.electricaltrainingusa.com and click on the link at the bottom left side of the page choosing the correct motor. I would like to hear from you, so make comments to me, jim at drivesys.com, and for additional training information, please visit www.electricaltrainingusa.com. Thank you for watching.